Okay, uh, today we're going to discuss the convex grind. And uh, convex grind is one of my favorite grinds. Um, and and uh, a lot of people uh, who, who use them do get used to them and do end up uh, favoring them um, as time goes on. Uh, I mean, as I've stated in, in my previous video, there's pluses and minuses to the different grinds. And I'm not going to uh, sit up here and, and tell you that um, one grind is better than the other. Uh, for certain applications, that may be true. Uh, but in general, when woodsmen and woodswomen uh, are looking for a knife on their belt, generally we're looking for something that uh, can do a myriad of tasks. Uh, I don't want a specialized tool for my main belt knife. And that's mainly why I've steered away from a Scandinavian ground knife, especially a thick Scandinavian ground knife. I have a, uh, several tools, and any woodsman worth their salt is going to have that as well. Um, it may be a, a pocket knife, which I've showed this knife numerous times. This is the uh, Case Stockman. Uh, this handles a lot of different smaller tasks. But is even up, uh, up to making uh, you know shelter poles through through tension cutting, um, peeling sticks for snowshoes, um, and, and those types of things. So I'm not looking to have a knife that that will shave uh, wood, you know, like it's a spoke shave, or I'm not looking at my belt knife to uh, you know whittle the finest trap trigger that the world has ever seen, um, or my belt knife to you know whittle these exquisite spoons and stuff. Uh, I have a pocket knife that for the most part will do that. The rest of it is up to me up here uh, to bring that vision down into my hands with knowledge and skill to make that happen. Uh, many times it's not really the tool. But if I am going to do something that is so uh, niche in its application, like making spoons or whittling trap triggers or filleting fish or uh, you know, skinning, I'm gonna pick a knife that's more specialized. But as woodsmen, like I said, for the most part, we're talking about uh, you know, a general utility blade. And that's where I feel the convex grind really, really comes into play. So in general, of course, we can have a full height grind. And a full height grind would be like this. So, what knives, uh, you know, would have this grind like this would typically be knives that, um, you know, we're, we're going to use, um, we're gonna get better slicing capability. If we have a saber, saber convex, we're gonna lose a little bit of our slicing ability. So, the old school marble knives and uh, another company, Hess, they uh, make beautiful convex grinds. And many of these grinds are so uh, so wickedly sharp. So having said this now, uh, many people say that, well, the convex grind has a lot of material, a lot of steel behind the cutting edge. And they're right, but it doesn't always have to be the case. I have a Hess Pioneer knife that is very, very thin. Uh, starts out at decent th stock thickness and gets very thin. I wouldn't say there's a lot of meat behind that edge. Now, comparatively speaking to another grind, it may be. So I'm going to draw up here, just for the sake of this, we'll do a high flat grind. No, better yet, let's, let's do a Scandinavian grind, which I feel is probably my least favorite um, knife for a general utility. So here is our Scandinavian knife, and we go like that. Okay, so as you can see, we're not talking about a lot of sliceability here, right folks? 
That's, that's not going to be the case. So if I want to make this convex, I can't go up here and do it, right? I mean, you could. But I want to keep all things equal here, right? I want to keep it all equal. So if I want the same stock thickness and the grind to still start at that spot, now I have to go like this. So this is why you're going to have more meat behind the cutting edge with, with the convex. You can see that. Now obviously a hollow grind, we're talking less in general because we're gonna have more or less like this. The Bravo knife made by Bark River is a high convex grind. Uh, these grinds are seen, um, another name for it is, is the apple seed. Um, in, in, uh, these knives are primarily used for heavy applications. Unless you're getting, you're getting into real thin stock. They work great, believe me. The, the Marbles knives, the Hess Pioneer, and the thinner uh, Bark River convex blades, especially full height grinds, always slice better. And in this instance, the full height convex grind on those blades uh, works wonderful. But your axe is going to be the same way or your hatchet is going to have the same grind. So what you'll notice uh, out there using, using your tool is you're going to notice that it doesn't bind as readily as a flat grind will bind. Now keep in mind, you know, with the flat grind, we got this V grind, right? So when you get, when you bite in, into anything, and you bury that blade in the chop or your uh, um, uh, cross grain batoning, like truncating something, give it a try and test out your different blades. And you'll see that the full flat, or the flat, I'm sorry, is going to give a little bit of wedging in there. You're going to have to wiggle the knife a little bit to pull it out after you've batoned. You won't get that with the convex. You won't get that at all. As a matter of fact, when you're talking about a Scandinavian ground knife, a lot of times it's very hard to cross grain baton because you reach, you get here, and if you have a thick Scandi knife like some of these I see that are being produced out there, uh, a lot of times it'll back you right out of your cut and in, into, uh, into the tree. But that's not the case too much when we're talking about the convex grind because with the convex grind, we sort of open the fibers of the wood a little bit. Now the, uh, you know, the ax makers, and uh, especially ax makers in, in, in America, um, very, very good axes have come out of the Americas. It, this grind is on there for a multitude of reasons and it does work. Now the other thing too is I hear a lot of people talk about that it's hard to sharpen. And I don't really think it's hard to sharpen. I think it's just a little bit different to sharpen. It's hard to wrap your head around having to rock this on a uh, whatever your sharpening media is. So take for instance if we do have, here's our uh, sharpening stone, okay? And we're looking at it from the side. All right, um, we, this rocking motion that we have to produce has to sort of be like this. We have to work the back part of the blade first. Let me just draw this again. This is our saber convex grind. You gotta work this area here on the push cut, right? Well, you know, this whole total area, if you wanna keep this even. And then this here is on the back cut. On the back cut is when we bring the blade, we tilt it up. Now these movements are very minuscule, they're not big movements. But you wanna keep a good evenness. So you, you want to, to sharpen the blade in its entirety, or the bevel in its entirety, uh, as much as you can. Otherwise, shorten that up a little bit. Otherwise, as time goes on, 
and you keep sharpening just this down here as if maybe uh, in the field it's fine. You want to get, get a few licks on your, on your stone or, or something like that, uh, and it's fine to, to touch this up down here, your actual final cutting edge. But when you want to take your, your knife to the stone, which may not be often at all, uh, you want to work this entire thing. And because what happens is, as we keep sharpening this here, and that only, well, this wears away. And now we have this. And as you can see now, this is not going to have the performance that it once had. I know a lot of people tout the, the wonders of the Scandinavian ground knife because they said, well, as you keep sharpening, you always maintain that original bevel. Well, yeah, if you're always that perfect at sharpening it, and if you're field sharpening things a lot, which is what I tend to do, um, sometimes it might not be the case. But, uh, yes, you will continue to work up this stock thickness and shorten that blade down over the course of years and technically continue to maintain that. The convex grind, I find, uh, tends to be a really good balance where we can get a good, sturdy knife with nice uh, stock thickness, but still have good cutting performance. Now, I want you to think of like a, a bullet, right? And look at that bullet. It's aerodynamic. Look at a, look at a jet, an airplane, if you will. We have, we have this, and that's because any media you're going to cut has this nice transition like that. It can, it can go around. The media will go around the blade. And it's many times a lot easier to, to you know, push that into wood uh, than some other types of grinds. So, uh, you know, prominent uh, makers on the market right now that, that are, you know, using a, a lot of this, obviously Bark River uh, is a big one. And uh, they, they, they do. They make excellent knives. As I said, we're talking about, as, as woodsmen, we're, we're talking about, uh, you know, you've, you've got several tools. Uh, maybe an axe, a saw, a pocket knife, a fillet knife, or a crooked knife. Uh, when it comes to picking a belt knife, in my opinion, I want something that I'm going to be able to maybe uh, break down a deer with, um, split some kindling, make some feather sticks, uh, chop some, you know, uh, slice some, uh, you know, salt cured bacon. That, those are the things that I'm sort of looking to do. Make a pot hanger, all right, um, and not have to always be grabbing another tool. Once again, I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. I will have more and we'll talk about other grinds. Take care.